Well, good morning and welcome to the Men's Leadership Network. Welcome to week three of seven of our fall series. We're excited you're here. A special welcome to all the, uh, the individuals meeting at our satellite locations this morning in Cool Springs at Bricks, in Nolensville at Highway 55, and then in Nashville at Flavor Catering. Welcome. I uh, want to remind everybody that if you have questions during this time and want to get those to us, we will take some questions here at the end. You can do that two ways. One is send an email, questions at mensleadershipnetwork.com. The other is to tweet us at leadership underscore net. We'll try to also run a bumper or something on the screen to remind you halfway through. Uh, this morning, it's my privilege to introduce Isaac Meek. Isaac Meek is a native Nashvilleian, fifth generation pastor's kid, former finance CFO, youth pastor, and worship leader. Son of a pastor and traveling missionary, Isaac spent close to four years of his childhood in Zimbabwe. Later in life, he attended Middle Tennessee State University, where he majored in accounting. However, before committing to balancing budgets, he decided to follow God's prompting and joined a traveling group of musicians. He finally recalls hearing the Lord say, you don't have to take this job, but if you do, you'll meet your wife. Isaac met his wife, Stephanie, in New York City while playing music, and they were engaged within four months. Isaac went on to work as a finance major and part-time youth pastor for the next decade while they started their family. Isaac's work ethic and drive propelled him quickly in his career, but soon the stress of work coupled with the responsibilities of being a husband and father put a strain on his life. Determined to make a change and spend more time with his family, Isaac prayed and asked God for the answer. The Lord released him to bake and play music. Out of those instructions, Isaac and Stephanie took a faith-filled step to start a bakery. Almost overnight, the Lord opened door after door, leading Five Daughters Bakery to the status of best bakery in Nashville, expanding to four locations in just two years. Isaac is passionate about helping people recognize and boldly follow their dreams while leading a company that is relational and kingdom-minded. He and Stephanie live in Franklin with their daughters Constance, Maggie, Lucy, Dylan, and Evangeline. Please join me this morning and welcome Isaac Meek. Yeah. Isaac. Thank you. Isaac, this is great. Thanks for being here today and for speaking with us. And thanks for bringing donuts. That was awesome. Thank Way you for having me. me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah. love it. Yeah. So, uh, hey, we heard a little bit of your bio, but tell us about your growing up years and uh, kind of how did that provide a foundation for you today? Yeah, that, that bio was amazing. Yeah, well, it was good. <laughs> it was written by my what wife. <laughs> yeah. No, she did a great job with that. Um, yeah, no, I was, so I was born in Nashville, uh, which... Seems to be more and more rare yeah. these days, uh, but I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm a fifth generation pastor's kid, and growing up, uh, I never really felt like a lot of pastor's kids stray away, no offense to anybody, but a lot of pastor's kids, you know, fall off the track at some point. For me, I, growing up, my, my father always put our family first, mm -hmm. uh, and he did an amazing job of like loving me and making sure that I knew uh, that, you know, he loved God first, then he loved us, and then, you know, his work, which was the church, but at the same time, it was like, it was very clear. And so growing up, like, I had a, a really strong foundation of love from my father mm -hmm. and from my mother, and uh, it really, it really set the stage for the rest of my life. Uh, when I was five, we moved to Zimbabwe, uh, which was crazy. <laughs> Uh, it was a complete paradigm shift from America. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it allowed our, our family to really come together and solidify. It allowed me to see uh, my family trusting the Lord and following Him. Um, and so I got, I got saved early, like when I was three or four, but then I got rededicated mm -hmm. uh, later when I was nine. And so, but yeah, just, just being in that and having that heritage uh, made a huge difference in my life that I can look back on and say, wow, like because of what my mother and father did, because of the faith that they had and the way that they loved us, mm -hmm. uh, I, I never really felt lost. I never went through a period, you know, where I needed to see what else was out there, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, never been drunk, never, never done <laughs> drugs, like never did any of those things uh, because I was so happy with what I had and I knew that there was more, like the further that I pressed. Wow. And so... I yeah. love that. Way to go. Good parents. Way to go, parents. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thankful. I want to be a parent like that. Yeah. 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 And, and now God's blessed you with five daughters. So He has. We keep having daughters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. My wife wants us to keep going because she'd like to have a son. But yeah. Wow. It's Good. okay. If we have... 
10 daughters. Like, we'll see. Yeah. You can change the name of the company, though. What in the world? Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. If we have a son, we're going we're gonna to do one son steakhouse. Even oh. though we have no... It just, it just sounds right. Yeah, you know? I love that. It's so, uh, yeah. Hey, tell us how you met Stephanie, because I was listening to that bio, and sure. that is an interesting story. So, I, uh, I always liked girls, but I never had a girlfriend uh, all my life. And it was because I always wanted just this one girl at a time. I mean, you know, it would change over time, but it was always, it had to be her. It had to be the one. Anyway, that led to a long adolescence of no girlfriends uh, and then even into college of no girlfriends. Mm. And I realized that, uh, that I wanted a very specific thing. And uh, I mean, looks wise, like loves the Lord wise, like all these things. And it just wasn't there. And so I just kind of waited. I was like, you know what? I'll just, I'll just let God take care of this. And I was in college. I was playing in a band. And uh, after a show, a girl came up to me who was new in town and she said, that was an amazing show. I'd love for you to, uh, to join my band and, uh, and, be, and be part of what I'm doing. I, I'm in new in town and I'm just trying to form a group. And I just, I really want to find like good Christian guys who are like, like you. And I was like, this is, I already have a band. I'm like the lead singer of my band. Why do I want to be in your band? And, uh, and she, uh, like, she was very, she was very sweet. And, uh, and she was like, well, okay, I don't know anybody. Could you just help me find somebody to, uh, to play? And I'm in college, and most of my friends are in college at Belmont in music or at MTSU in music. And I was like, yeah, I could totally find you a guitar player. Tell me about your job. And so she began telling me about it, and it was, it was financed by a billionaire who used it as a write-off. Everything that they did was first class. Absolutely everything that they did was just, like, mind-blowingly amazing. And I was just listening to this, and I was like, this will, this will literally take no time. I'll make a call. You'll have a guitar player. Easy. And uh, I started calling my friends who were in school to do that. And every single one of them would just be like, no, I got this other thing going on. I don't think I want to do that right now. And it was, it was uncanny. I mean, I had over a dozen people that I called trying to find this girl a guitar player over the, literally the course of over almost two weeks. And I started praying. I was like, God. Why can't I find anybody? Am I supposed to do this? Mm. And I felt like I heard him say, you don't have to do it, but if you choose to do it, you'll meet your wife. And I was like, sold. <laughs> like, that's all you had to say. And so I, I broke up my band and joined this girl um, and went on the road with her and played. And it was an amazing experience. We did a lot of cool things. Uh, for a college kid. We lived mm -hmm. on the beach, only had to play four days a week. We never took a tour bus. We flew first class everywhere, stayed in five-star hotels. We had the macho man Randy Savage do the door for us, like at, at smaller gigs. It was just weird, but cool. But <laughs> I never met my wife, like in that whole span of time. In, in almost two years, it was, it was a little over 18 months, I never met anybody that I was like even remotely yeah, this is the one, like nothing. And uh, we were playing a show in New York City uh, for Radio Disney at a street fair where there were literally, I mean, it's just, it was New York and then there's a street fair, so there's thousands of people just pouring down the street. And I'm tuning up my guitar on this little stage and I look down the street and I see her. I mean, like two or three blocks at least away. And I'm like, oh, that's, that, I like her. And I, I was like, be cool having no idea how to be cool. And so I put my hair down, and I was just tuning my guitar, just trying to be cool. And she just walked straight up to the stage, straight up to me, and said, who's playing? And I froze. Like, I, didn't, I, I literally couldn't speak because that was just surreal. And so I pointed at the sign for who was playing and, and didn't say anything. Unbeknownst to me, that was actually a pretty good move. Uh, she's, she's a go-getter. And to her, that was like a challenge. It was like, oh, this guy thinks he's too good, too cool for school. Like, I'm going to get him. And so, uh, so she stayed, and she watched our set, uh, even though she didn't really care for that kind of music. And uh, she stood there the whole time until the second to the last song. And on the second to the last song, she winked at me, and then she walked off into the crowd. And I was just like, no! <laughs> God, no, she winked at me like she likes me. And uh, 
As soon as we were done, I threw down my guitar and I started to jump off the stage. And the guy who was playing bass right behind me was doing the same thing. And I was like, what are you doing? Because we always helped. Like we, we were like a little family. Uh, and we always helped like tear down. I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, did you see that hot Asian girl? <laughs> and I go, yeah. He goes, she winked at me. And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm pretty sure she winked at me. <laughs> and between the two of us, we knew that she winked at me. Uh, anyway, I went running off down the street, like looking for her, like on high alert. It was her plan. In New York. In New York with, the kids you not, like the street was packed with people, like up and down, like almost as far as your eye could see. Uh, couldn't find her, came back to the stage. It had been her plan all along to like meet me afterwards because she was smooth like that and I was frantic and not that cool. Um, and so I, I walked up to the stage and met her, super nervous, got her number. Um, and you know, after that I was just like, like in this like weird state of what's, what am I doing? Like I can't believe that this just happened. And uh, throughout the course of the day I was like, I need to call this girl, I need to call this girl, I need to go on a date with this girl. No, she's probably a bad girl. She's probably not a Christian. She's probably not what I need. And I uh, ended up talking myself out of doing it. Uh, and so that night I'm sitting there in my hotel like just waiting uh, for, for the four other guys in the band to call me like we did every single day. Every day for a year and a half, we'd call each other and say, hey, where do you want to go to dinner? There's only five of us total. And so, I mean, it was like a little family. So I'm just waiting in my room. I'm like, I shouldn't call her. That's the smart decision because um, you don't know anything about her. Um, and just waiting on these guys. And it got later and later and later. And uh, finally, uh, I called them at like 7.30. I was like, hey, are we going to go to dinner? And they're like, oh, where are you? We're at dinner. And I was like, are you kidding? Like, I hadn't told them anything about going out with a girl. And, uh, and they were like, yeah, no, we're at dinner. We're at this, this Mexican place in, in New York. Which, if you know anything about food in New York, Mexican's like the last thing you should right. get in New York. Like, you could get that in like, Texas <laughs> or like here, but not in New York. And so I go, I go and I meet them, and they're, they're eating this food that doesn't look that good, and they're almost done in this place, and it's just like loud, and it's not that great. And I, like, that was like, that was the push that God needed to give me to make that light go, I'm gonna call that girl. And so I did, so I called her, and uh, long story, longer story short, we ended up going out that night. I was so nervous, and she, God had worked it out to where she wasn't that hungry, to where our date started with us, well, our date started with me walking up the steps to her apartment, opening the door and seeing a scripture on her door. And I was like, yes, this could be good. But then after that, uh, our, our official date started with, uh, with us realizing that we weren't hungry. And we just sat on a park bench in New York and talked for three hours and fell mm -hmm. in love with the Lord and with each other. And uh, because God's awesome, that actually ended up being the last show that I ever played with that artist. So they called us you know, the next week and said, we're going to take a break for a while. We're going to keep paying you. But uh, it, it ended up being the last show that we ever played. And all the money that I'd made and saved, I was able to use to go back and see her literally every two weeks until we were engaged and then used it to like help move her down so that we could get married. But it was like God was like just preparing, 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 wow. preparing, and then it was done. And Isaac, so, yeah. that's awesome. That's how we met. <laughs> Man, yeah. that, that's like the story of your life though. You've just seen God just put things in place because then you true. were in accounting and yet yeah. you didn't feel like that was your right place and God had something else, right? It's true. I, uh, I, I love numbers and I love math, um, although that can be kind of a lonely, <laughs> a lonely <laughs> thing to do. Uh, but because of that, I, I, I ended up following an accounting route and I got a job. And it was a great job for a little while. It provided for our family, like it provided a lot, a lot of health mm. uh, that we needed. Um, and I was there for 10 years, but about seven years into it, uh, the, the culture of the business kind of shifted. Uh, it's, it's a great company and I love them, uh, but we, we were, I'm a, I'm a family guy and I, I firmly believe in like, you know, setting, setting your family above your work. Mm. Um, and the, the cultural dynamic shifted to where that was just no longer the case. Um, in the job. There were about 30 people that worked there the last year that I was there. 
and my wife and I had more kids than everyone else in the company combined. And these weren't like fresh out of college kids. These were just like people that that was their choice in life. Mm -hmm. Like they're not going to have kids. They're going to advance their career. And uh, it, it caused a lot of tension, like in our marriage, like a lot of friction, a lot of tension for those last three years that I was there. And, uh, and yeah, I wish that I was, would have listened to my wife sooner. But uh, yeah, we, we, began, we began fighting uh, over, you know, how much time I got to spend at home, you know, how, how much work I, I had, because I just, it was just like this weight that was on me, like I need to perform for these people. I need, not even necessarily for my career, like I had this like strange like duty to my job because of the culture of you have a duty to your job, you know, over your family that I was in. Mm -hmm. And so, and it was just creating this really awful dynamic uh, because we were trying to have a culture at home of, you know, it's our family. Mm -hmm. And then I am, am living and it's this other culture. And so... It took a while. It took, it took a few fights. <laughs> but uh, by the end of 2014, uh, in October, I kind of, we, Stephanie and I did a little getaway. We like to do a lot of getaways just to like reconnect because we have a lot of kids and we need time together. Um, but we did a little getaway and we fought for a lot of it until I just broke down and was like, you know what? I'll do it. Like, I'll leave the job where I'm CFO, where I've worked up, uh, where I'm potentially in position to, you know, receive the company someday and, you know, have, you know, nine, I think I had 10 weeks paid vacation and bonuses and everything. I had, on paper, I literally had everything that you want, mm. you know, uh, but it just, it wasn't right because you can't, you can't exist in both of those cultures. So in October 2014, I broke down, cried, you know, and said, you know, okay, like, I'll, I'll make a change. Came home, jump right back into that environment, but knew in the back of my head, okay, this is something you're gonna have to do. Began like making a resume, you know, began thinking about, okay, who are Christian business leaders? What's some way that I can still do what I do to make enough money to provide for myself? You know, that sort of mentality yeah. so that I can live in Williamson County and, and, and all this stuff. And uh, by December, I, I was ready. I, I had like, I'd targeted a few people that I knew that would be a much healthier place, a much healthier thing. And uh, by the end of December, I had my resume and it was like, babe, I'm gonna go ahead and send, send my resume to these guys and that way like, we can see what happens. And uh, she walked into the room as I was finishing the email to the first guy and she goes, what does God say you should do? And I was so mad. Cause it was like, I was just like, it's, it's been two months of me like getting to this point like, you should have said that to me two months ago. Yeah. Like, why are you saying that to me now? Like, I've made, like, all this, like, internal change so mm. that I could make a change. And, uh, and so we had a little fight over that. And then I repented. And I, I was just like, you know what? You're right. Like, I need to, I need to, I just need to ask God. Like, what, is, what does he say? And so I went and I prayed. And I felt like I heard the Lord say that I could bake and do music. And I, in, my, in my head, I'm thinking... <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, I know nothing about baking other than that my, my great-grandfather had owned a cake shop and my grandfather had owned a pizzeria. Other than that, I didn't really know any, anything. I worked at Chick-fil-A when I was 16, and that's, that's the extent of my experience. Uh, but I did know that I loved it. I loved to do it in the house. Like, I loved to make things for the kids, and, you know, it was a creative outlet for me. And then what I knew of music was, like, that's going to be a tough road to, to pay for your, like, to immediately jump into with no connections to pay for your life. And so, but anyway, I came out of the room and I was like, babe, I feel like God's saying that I can bake and do music. And I'm expecting her to be like, yeah, what else? You know, like, yeah, let's, yeah. let's do something else. But instead she just goes, great, let's do that. And it was like, it was like this weight like came off my shoulders. It was wow. like, we were like united, like in, in something that was, that seemed, it seemed impossible. But at the same time, it was like, I had a partner. Like I had somebody who believed in me and who believed in like what I could do. And even though it didn't make any sense, like it just was this amazing like burden lifted. And so I didn't send my resume to any other leaders. Uh, the next day was New Year's Eve, and we went out with friends on New Year's Eve, and they were like, 
what's new for 2015? What's God doing? And uh, we were like, well, I think Isaac's going to start baking. <laughs> you know, like, I will see how it goes. You know, like, we think maybe he'll try to, like, get in with a wedding coordinator or something and do cakes and cupcakes. And a guy who was sitting at the table who'd had my, my birthday cupcakes just goes, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> and we were both kind of like, <gasps> like, what do you mean you shouldn't do that? He goes, you shouldn't do that. He's like, there's already a ton of people doing cakes and cupcakes. If you could do a gourmet donut, and more specifically, if you could do a croissant dough donut, you'd kill it. And I was like, huh, I could try. Like, I could definitely try that. And so at the table, I was like, yeah, I'll try that. And then the next day, Every day for eight days, one of the other guys at the table texts me every day, when can I come over for donuts? When can I come over for donuts? When can I come over for donuts? And so by January 8, 2015, I was just like, babe, I've got to make donuts for Phil. Like, invite them over this weekend and I'll start making donuts. And uh, so yeah, so I began the process. A croissant dough donut like we make takes three days. Uh, and so on January 10th, I made my first one. I began it on January 8th, made it on January 10th and loved it. I loved everything about it. It was so fun and so good. And, uh, and everybody who had it, they were, I mean, they were all very kind. Like, they've kind of come a long way since, but they were just like, wow, these are awesome. You could do, you could do great things. And uh, a, great, a great friend of mine uh, who actually owns a couple businesses here in town, he owns uh, Honest Coffee and he owns uh, Franklin Juice Company, saw it on Instagram and he was like, hey, can you do that for us? And I was like, yeah, I, I can. And so a couple days later, when, when they were ready, we began delivering donuts to Honest Coffee Roasters, and that was how it all began. Wow. But what's crazy about it is, like, we, like, none of that was really us. Like, all of that, like, so far was God. And as soon as, as, soon as we started selling them with Honest Coffee, we were like, let's do this. Let's make this happen. And so we we're like, well, what should we do? We should go to our our church and try to sell them in the cafe there. So we went to the church that we went to at the time. And we were like, we've got this product and we think that you should try it and we'd love for you to sell it. And, uh, and they just said, no. <laughs> and we were like, okay. And we came back and we were like, we won't charge you for it. Like we just, we just would like to like get our name out there. And literally like I, I sent a really long email that was just like, please, like we we're just trying to like get started. And I got a one word response back that just said, no. I was like, wow, okay. And we tried another coffee shop that was really close to our house and we brought them into them. And they were like, no, these won't work. They're just, they're too expensive. They're too frou-frou. It's just not gonna, it's not gonna work. And we, so both of the things that we tried just totally shut down. And so Stephanie and I prayed and we were just like, what are we supposed to do? It's like, well, we'll keep selling it honest roasters and we'll just wait on God. And like literally, as soon as we said that, calls started coming in wow. from other places that were like, can you guys do that for us? Can you do that for us? And by March 15th, we had so many people that were ordering from us that I was able to quit my job. I was able to quit with one-to-one -one, like income displacement from my other job, knowing that it was still growing and building. We'd met several people that were like, hey, we do anything to like help you succeed. I mean, like, I'm probably not supposed to disclose any official things, but just crazy stuff that's not supposed to happen. Like, you know, the kitchen that we're in was just like God. It was completely God mm. who just gave it to us. And we found that the more that we rested and the more that we allowed him to just move, the more that we grew. And the more that we were like, let's make this happen. Let's, let's provide for ourselves. Let's do this business. The more that it just stopped. It just wow. grinded to a halt. And so... Yeah. That's awesome. That's how, it, that's how it started. Yeah. And it's just continued. Like, we've learned a lot about, like, resting and trusting. Mm. Uh, because, you know, the bigger that it's, that it's grown, which we're not, we're not huge by any means, but the bigger that it's grown, the easier it gets to just get distracted in all, there's every level of minutia. Like, whether it's your people or your product or your, your potential growth. Like, yeah. there's every opportunity to get distracted. But the more that we notice that, the more that we unite because we're a team. Because, you know, from the very beginning, oh, yeah. it was like, hey, we're doing this together. But the more we unite and the more we go, let's get away. Let's get away with God. And like, let's rest. And let's see, let's see what door he wants us to walk through. Mm. Like, let's see what, what opening he wants to do. 
It's been wow. awesome. Yeah. What a transition, though, from CFO of an accounting firm to yeah. baking donuts, you know? And oh, it's weird. Yeah. yeah. But praise God. So you say it, 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 it's not that big, but it, it really has grown a lot. It has. I mean, we, we now have, we now have, it's weird to say, we yeah. now have a little over 70 employees. And uh, we've, we're working on our third Nashville location, and we've signed up for one Florida location uh, down in our favorite place where we uh, vacation. Um, and we want to do two more down there, too. And so, yeah, it's, it's, cr- it's growing. And it's, yeah. been, it's been like a year and a half, a little over that. And so It's amazing. So what's been the biggest uh, excitement about the growth, and what's been the biggest challenge? Um. Well, the biggest excitement about the growth, honestly, is seeing how it impacts my family and it impacts Mm. our people. Uh, The growth is is cool, Um, but honestly, like having people that that are doing it with you that actually catch the vision of like what you're doing and the culture of what you're doing and they're coming out of other cultures uh, is is awesome. It's amazing to see people just go, you care about me? Like you, you care about, you know, what? I want to do in life like we we tell everybody in every interview I tell people I'll make less money we'll make less donuts like I don't care about that like I care about the culture of the company I care about not stressing people out but I mean everybody works together as a team but creating an environment where people know that they're loved and taken care of Mm. and that starts in the family and so being able to be with the kids, being able to be with Stephanie, being able to all go in together. I mean, not every day, usually it's just me, but you know, several days a week, like we'll all go in together and you know, our employees get to interact with our kids. Our employees get to interact with us and we're the same at home. We're the same at church. We're the same mm-hmm. in the business. And there's not, there's not, oh, when I'm here, I'm stressed, but when I'm here, I try to like unwind. There's none of that. And that's such a blessing. Like wow. being able to live like that is, is amazing. I didn't know it was like even possible, quite frankly, because I came out of such a stressful environment before. And so to me, that's kind of the biggest blessing. Like it's a, it's a heritage for my kids. It's a legacy mm-hmm. for my kids to, uh, to see and to, to latch on to. But also it's, it's something that because we're impacting our employees, it's impacting the culture of our community. And it's something that grows way beyond. Like I hope, I hope that they all leave us at some point and do it somewhere else and go, no, you know what? Like when you put each other first and mm-hmm. love each other, it actually creates an environment that sets you up for success, wow. you know? And so I'm sure there are other places that do that, but to be able to be a part of one that does that and does that like proactively is amazing. The difficulty of the growth is managing it because it's a lot of things that we do now are new. And so for a lot of that, we've, we've got, a, we've got, I mean, just like having a group of men that you can come together with and mm-hmm. relate with and say, you know, this is what I'm struggling with. Uh, business is not really much different than that at all. And most businesses have already figured that out. But we've surrounded ourselves with people who've walked further, who've done more, who have the experience in other areas. And so my difficulty, my, my, my trick is letting things go, mm. and it's not even a trick. It's, it's, it's something I learned from a different pastor named Andy Stanley. It's mm-hmm. just like, hey, every, there's every job, like you fill all the jobs you have to fill, and then you let them go, like you teach them, like mm. and, until you're doing like what you love to do only. And, uh, and so I try to do that. It's just the, the nature, like the human nature wants to hold on to stuff, you know? And so the bigger we grow, the, the more we need, Stephanie and I need each other to go, you need to give that up. Mm. Like, you need to stop caring that. You need to let somebody else do that. Mm. Like, you need to teach it, and then you need to continue that process down the line. And so most of the people on our team have begun, like, hitting a place where they get to, like, pass it on and give it up, you know, and, like, and learn. And it's very good, but it's also very challenging to to continue to do as you continue to grow. Mm. I think once we hit a place where we're done growing, if that happens, which... As a totally separate note, I think when you're done growing, I think that you're, you, you begin dying. Yeah. And so, yeah, I don't really want to be done growing. But at the same time, like once we hit a more like, hey, this is who we are, then uh, it, might, it might adjust. But for the time being, we're, we're growing. And mm. so giving, giving up the jobs and the responsibilities is, is the, probably the toughest challenge yeah. that we face. How have you kept Christ first through it all? I mean, that's a year and a half of 
fast yeah. growth. I mean, huge growth. And how have you prioritized Christ in all that? Sure. Um, there's kind of two, it's kind of a twofold answer. So one, when we don't, mm -hmm. it makes itself evident real quick. It's like, hey, Christ literally, like God and Christ made all of this real, made mm -hmm. all of this happen, all the opportunities and things like that. And so it's, it's very, it's always in the forefront of my mind that the minute that I go, I'm in charge, like I'm the one who's making this succeed, like it begins to fall apart. And so, but for us, for Stephanie and I, I mean, we, we definitely, we spend a lot of time in worship. We spend a lot mm -hmm. of time in the word and we spend a lot of time just talking about what, what is God doing like in your life? Not, mm -hmm. not necessarily like in your business, mm -hmm. but in your life, like in your kids' lives. And so, and I mean, it, I, I heard a, I heard a statistic and I'm going to butcher it and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a statistic that, that, uh, Christian families, uh, that, Christian families have no different divorce rate mm. than worldly families uh, or non-Christian families. Uh, that Christian families who go to church regularly have no different divorce rate mm. than everybody else. Christian families who worship together and do a Bible study together, no different divorce rate. However, Christian families where the parents say or report that they pray together every day have literally a 97% better wow. chance of staying together. It's close to that. That might be slightly <laughs> off, but it's, it's just absolutely astronomically different mm. than everybody else on the spectrum. Whether you went to church together, you, you know, served in church together and all that stuff. If you didn't pray together, then there's a pretty decent statistical chance yeah. that you're going to end up the same as everybody else. And so Stephanie and I definitely make it a point to pray together every day, to pray together every morning. Usually we're praying every night. And mm. so, yeah, that makes a, a yeah. huge difference. Huge. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. We should look up the exact statistical yeah. <laughs> number. Don't officially quote me on that. But it, it does make a huge difference. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. Isaac, we're, you know, all, a lot of us, we have career and family and all the things in our lives. And yet God's called us to be spiritual leaders, right? So, right? so what would you say to encourage us, to encourage all the men who are here today or watching on this podcast to be a spiritual leader? What, what advice would you give us? I would say don't look too far down the road. Mm. Um, I would say that for, I, I was a youth pastor for yeah. a while and I would deal with a lot of people and I feel like it, it's true like from a young age potentially to a very old age. I don't know. I'm about to be 37, but at least till 37 to want to go, what's down here? Like, what's, how am I going to get to here? And I don't think that that's necessarily wrong, but I think that God's plan for most people's life, mm. you know, isn't to go, I'm going to show you how to get to here. Mm. Like, it's to go, here's your next step. Here's your next step. And that seems so trivial to, to us, but it's how you get to here. And so for, for me and for the people that, that yeah. I'm, you know, in community with and encouraged with, uh, and encourage each other, it's what's the next step? Like what's, what's God showing you that you could do today yeah. uh, or even this morning, you know? And it, and it shouldn't be grandiose necessarily. I mean, like you'll have those grandiose moments, but usually those are like, wow, I just had a grandiose moment as opposed to this is going to be amazing. It's usually just a next step of, of just following him. And you usually know what your next step is. You just don't usually know what your fifth or sixth. And, that, and those are the ones that you can worry about and eat you up. And, you know, it's, it's God's heart to reveal, like, his plan, yeah. his path for you. But, you know, whether your path ends up going this way and you're really happy that he took you over here, but you would have never gone there. Like, you're not going to know. You just need to take the next step. Yeah. And so. Well, it keeps you dependent on the Lord, right? It does. You know, because if, if you just know every one, then it, it becomes about you. Just like you were saying exactly. earlier. You exactly. know, you're laying it out versus trusting that God's going to lead you, that God's going to provide. Right. Yeah. That's, that's huge. Yeah. I mean, he puts, I mean, it was, to me, it was uh, incredible to actually, like, truly, like, latch on and believe like, I love to bake, yeah. and he put that desire in my heart, and that doesn't seem spiritual at all. And so, you know, to, to really truly believe that, oh, he designed me this way. To, he designed you to love things that you love. And sometimes it's 
you know, it's clearly spiritual. Like, I love to, like, you know, go out and connect one-on-one with people's hearts. Like, he designed you that way. Yeah. Like, and it's okay for you to step into that. If, you, if he designed you to love to hunt or whatever, like, he designed you that way. And the more that you step into that with him, the, the more he can reveal to you, the more that, like, you can walk down a path where you, you mm-hmm. like, hear him and, lo- like, feel encouraged by him, mm. you know. And for me, getting to bake and feel his love and getting to, to bake and see it impact the community is amazing. It's an amazing testimony to me personally. Wow. You, yeah. have, you, you have just given us so many great <laughs> nuggets to take away. I mean, seriously, about being in the culture of a work that is just suffocating you and yet yeah. saying, no, I don't, I don't need to live like that, you know? And God has wired me differently. And then creating the culture, right? And right. I think what you're doing is creating a culture over here that's Christ first and your family. And, and then, hey, we're going to make great donuts. And you make great donuts, Thanks. you know? <laughs> so, you. I mean, you want to do things well. Um, Isaac, what do you want your legacy to be? Um, I mean, I sort of mentioned legacy mm-hmm. a few minutes ago. I, to me, the legacy starts with my kids um, and, my, and my relationship to my wife. And as long as that is, is solid, then I'm not too worried about how the rest of it spills out. To me, I want my legacy to be that my kids know that they were loved by me mm. and that my wife knows that she was loved by me and that I loved the Lord with all my heart. Like, if, if all of that is in place, then I'm happy. Like, that's, that's my plan, you know? Mm. And I, I believe that that creates a culture that'll then spread from there. And, you know, whether, you know, it gets named after me or not, I <laughs> care less. Like, I hope it doesn't. I hope it gets named after Jesus, who literally loved, mm. you know, and then spread out. He didn't say, you're going to be the leader of everybody, and you're going to be the, the treasurer of everybody. No, it's just like, do what I did, mm. like serve and love, you know, put everybody on a very equal level and just said, I love you all, you know, like, whether you're the sinner next to me on both sides or you're my mother, like, I love you, you yeah. know? And so it, it's him. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, I hope that that lives on through me and then through my, my kids. Wow. I love yeah. it. I love Thanks. it. Isaac, we got time for a couple of questions, I think. Okay. Thomas? Yeah. They've come in. Um, the first one here, Isaac, what are a few take, key takeaways or a few ways that you maintain and protect your work-life balance? Um, well, the easiest way to protect your work-life balance is to understand who your provider is. And that's a pretty generic answer, like when you're in church. Um, and so kind of the, the practical like, application of that for me is to, to start each day like in thankfulness. Mm. I mean, when you, when you begin to, to try to be thankful, it, it pushes you deeper into a place where you understand what you're thankful for. Um, and so I try to start each day like in thankfulness, thanking the Lord for what he's done, uh, because that just sets the tone for your day. Um, If you don't have that set, then it is, it's difficult, and I've definitely, I'm guilty of not doing that and having crazy bad days, especially before, but even now. And so, but to create that, for for me, the best times that that work-life balance is is created, it's, it's when you start your day in thankfulness, you understand who your provider is, you're not the provider, like, and it allows you to uh, think clearly, to prioritize clearly, yeah. um, or at least for me. Yeah. I think that's huge. I mean, I think the prioritize <coughs> is, the, is the big key there, right? You know, yeah. what are your priorities? And, uh, and I love that thankfulness because you do look at your life and you go, God, look at what you've done. And yeah. so often we're going, well, what's next? What's next? Instead of just being thankful for the way God's provided. And if God's done this in my life up to this point, he's going to take care of me going forward. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. So, Whatever mean, it looks like, you will. Yeah. He will. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. Thank you. Yeah. No. Yep. We got a, a couple more here. Uh, your bakery has become an amazing success almost overnight. What has that ride taught you about being humble in the face of success? <laughs> My last name's Meek, so I started out. <laughs> um, Blessed no, yeah. the Meek, <laughs> right? <laughs> the humble. Um, yeah. I, our bakery has become an, an overnight success in, in terms of, of that sort of thing. But I'm, I'm kind of struggling with how to answer this because I, I started it with the understanding of I can't do all this. Yeah. And so 
I think that for people who are in a position where they could kind of take the credit for it all, uh, that, that's a dangerous place to be. Uh, for me, as best as you can surround yourself with people who either knew you before or who are alongside of you, you know, we, we have a couple partners that help us, and I mean help us, like do amazing things. And we, we literally couldn't be where we are without them. Um, one of them, I probably shouldn't be saying this, this is not a, well, whatever. One of them, I wanted him so bad on the team, I was just like, like, I'll give you ownership. Like, mm. just please, like, come alongside me. Like, you don't need to pay for it. Like, you don't need anything. Like, I need someone like you because I know that I'm weak in these other areas. And so just, like, having that, that foundation set, like, initially he, it, yeah, anyway, he, he didn't go for that offer. But, <laughs> <laughs> but still, he, just having, having brothers, like, beside you, having other people and your wife beside you who, mm -hmm. like, absolutely believe in you but also, like, are carrying the burden mm -hmm. helps you understand that you didn't do it. Also, just because of the way that God worked it out, it's very easy for us to go, we didn't do this. Yeah. Like, I, I'd never even been in a commercial bakery. I don't know. Should we do another question or should I tell a funny story? We'll, tell, we'll do it. tell the story. Okay. We, we were in our bakery and we were hand washing all the dishes for months and it took forever. And uh, one of the girls was just sitting there like washing dishes one day and she was like, we should get a dishwasher. <laughs> and I was like, in my head, I'm thinking about the dishwashers in people's houses like that you open and like 45 minutes later, like, you know, your few plates are done. And I was like, that's a terrible idea. Why would we get a dishwasher? And everyone else in the bakery was like, no, commercial dishwashers take like 30 seconds. And I was like, what? Are you serious? Why didn't we get a dishwasher like three months ago? Like we need a dishwasher now. And so we got a dishwasher, but it's like, I had no, I have no business like being in this business. Like it's only the grace of God that's like made this happen, you know? And Love so, that. yeah. And so I hope that that thought and that feeling never goes away, but yeah. it's something that, that I definitely try to carry with me. And whatever, whatever area of success you're in, it's partially because of like the God-given talent that he's given you, but it's also because of the doors that he's opened. Yeah. And yeah, he wanted you to walk through them. And yeah, you, you chose to walk through them, but it's a partnership. Mm. And the sooner you realize that, the less stress you'll feel, the less pressure like you'll feel, and the easier it'll be to, to clearly prioritize your life. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks. You got one last one? Yeah, I just want to ask how you don't gain 100 pounds every year <laughs> in a bakery. Uh, here, let, let's do this last one. God has shown up each time you've stepped out and followed him. What kind of impact has that had on your faith and how you talk about trusting God and taking risk with your daughters? Well, that's a loaded, long question. Um, just give us your short answer. Yeah. I'm just reading the question down there. I didn't even know that they were down there. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, faith, faith builds. I mean, it starts as a seed. And so for, for me, I've had different moments in my life that have been seeds planted in different times in my life where I've seen, like, faith grow. Uh, in all sincerity, since we began Five Daughters Bakery, like, that seed of faith in my life has definitely grown from, you know, being a pretty small plant in, in many ways to, to being something of size. And anytime that you've got something that's growing and of size, like it needs water. And so the more that we've grown, the more that, that my faith has grown, like the more that I've realized that I need to, I need to, you know, be saturated in worship, be saturated in prayer, mm. and I need that water. And so the, the short answer is, is that I try to stay close to the water. Like we, we yeah. spend a lot of, and I don't know how that needs to relate back to the kids. I mean, the kids see it too. And so, and it's, it's water that, that gets to spill into their life too. Wow. And so yeah, is that a good answer? That's an awesome that? answer. Yeah. Isaac, thank you. Man, You're I welcome. just love thank your you. heart. I do. Can I pray for us? Let's do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Let's do it. Father God, thank you for speaking through Isaac today. And God, speaking to my heart, Father, um, and just trusting you, Father, even as all of us go forward. And, and God, you have... You have done an incredible work in each one of us, God, but, but you're not finished with any of us. And so I pray that we would be men after your heart. I pray that we would be godly husbands and fathers, and we would seek you all the days of our lives, God. Continue to bless and continue to use us for your glory. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Isaac. Let's awesome. give Isaac Thank a hand.
Great Good job. Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> honest roast. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Honest I'm hoping roast. there's a couple donuts left back here. Uh, hey, guys, uh, be on the lookout this afternoon. That's Men's great. Leadership Network, Rewind email. There's over 30 podcasts just like this morning out there that are available as resources uh, that you can, that you can uh, pull up, you can send to friends, et cetera. Uh, as we close today, I want to make sure that you guys know who's coming next week. Next week, we have the former director of the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency. Okay, this is David Shedd. Many of you heard from him at our A6 retreat a couple weeks ago. He's going to be talking about how do you hold fast to your faith in an ever-changing world, okay? So you don't want to miss that. Bring a friend. Really try to get an extra person here next week. It's going to be very, very good. David has shared stories with us on the A6 retreat about being in the Oval Office, about being at key uh, decision-making times in the, in the history of our country. And so he's going to be someone that's going to give a faith, faith-based perspective from his experience in Washington. It should be very interesting. We'll start at 6.30 with breakfast and get kicked off at 7. Thank you.